to do it, you need to be extremely skilled in this area. And of course, looking into the market, uh, not so many people have that kind of capabilities. Hello. Hi, Joachim. How are you today? I'm fine. Yeah. Welcome to Architecture Corner. Thank you. We will talk about the future role about architects. Okay. Should we have a right? We can have a right. In an early episode about innovation, but what does uh, the role of architects become? The role of the architect when it goes for innovation, I think it's quite fundamental. Uh, you can't provide business innovation without the platform that provides the capabilities and, and the abilities to do innovation. And that would be one of the main uh, responsibility areas for an architect. We have a lot of common frameworks now that we're using and methods. Are they good enough for the architects to use in the future? That depends a bit what you mean with framework. I mean, looking at the TOGA, for instance, uh, you have both a process framework, the, the method for designing architecture, and you have a framework for content. I think in a way those are good enough. The, the frameworks per se don't need change. What does need change is the view on what the architect is doing, what kind of, of uh, role does the, the architect play. Uh, I think essentially we're going from a more or less a waterfallish approach where we take requirement analysis into design, uh, into actually that the architects need to create requirements. They actually need to be very active in understanding not only what the business requirement means, but actually adding business requirements. What do you say to those persons who say that TOGA and other frameworks are not working in the new world. Do they have a case? Well, I've seen this argumentation, of course, and, and I would say that yes, the problems that I pointed for uh, might be valid, but the question is whether it's the framework themselves that's the problem or the use of them. I think, frankly, that the frameworks might be okay, but perhaps the adaptation and the, the changes need to happen in the way you, you actually utilize them and you're pushing them into, into your company. That's where changes need. You have been working as an architect for nearly 20 years and yeah. the skills you needed those days and the skills that needed today has been rather different. What are the skills that are needed in the future? I think that the, if looking at my, my own career, I mean, what, what has been changing a lot would be the, the, the coverage or the, the, the the size of, of the things I'm working with, uh, having a much broader view in things today than I had perhaps 20 years ago, uh, going from a, as a system architect uh, and a night architect, then what you have a quite narrow and quite defined space, whereas today I'm working in a much more broad space. Um, and I think that that would be true for, for most people when you go into the future part of, of, of innovation here. Uh, at least the, the people working with that, that you need a very broad mindset uh, rather than the specialized and the deep uh, technology insights that, that they had 20 years ago. Today it's, it's the, um, the ability to adopt this understanding into a much, much, much broader picture. That is what I think I have and I think what will be needed in the future as well. Uh, what do you do when we are on heading the wrong direction? I think that you need as with all situations, when you understand you have a problem, you need to stop, take a step back and analyze the situation. I mean, simple as that, you need to do that. Uh, when it goes to, to uh, specifically architecture and, and the methodology of problems, when you're approaching a, a problem or a business scenario it would, in the wrong way, um, you need to take, take this action in understanding that the consequences of doing it wrong will be quite severe. Uh, you need to escalate, you need to communicate, and you need to do whatever you can do as an architect, uh, what you normally would do. You need to push your cases, uh, simple as that. Is that a requirement also in the future to have a long time experience in IT to work as an architect? Well, there is um, since many years an ongoing debate whether it's uh, best to have a technology background and approach business uh, being an architect or if you should have a business background and um, adopt and, and add the architectural skills for that. Um, there are good arguments for both and I think frankly that in the end it goes down to personality and the, p the person you're having in front of you. It might be a business person, it might be a technology person. I do not I frankly think that matters too much. Um, what could be a problem, of course, is the uh, the way that people are schooled, 
way that people are trained that you get an attitude and you get you get some kind of profile where you connect yourself with technology or with business uh, that could be a, a problem or a hindering but I think in the end uh, it goes down to personality it goes down to your personal skills and your personal views that, that's what matters Tom Graves showed a diagram about experience architects and the professionality of them uh, is there a huge difference about an experienced architect that could tailor the method on a high level to the future compared to those that are following the architecture methods for the strict? Yes. I think you could say there's a three-step ladder you can climb. Uh, the first ladder, you're starting to understand the framework, starting to understand the methodology, and of course you need to follow it uh, quite strictly. You need to do it under guidance, you need to do it uh, with the understanding you have at that level. Second level, it, this is when you understand the method, you understand the, the processes, you understand the, the, the methodology throughout, and you can follow that, and you can do some adaptation. Um, this third step, which is harder, of course, uh, is when you go into some kind of freeform mode, when you can adapt, you can freely follow, you can uh, change as you go. And doing that, of course, requires quite extensive experience of understanding the consequences of changes. Uh, and when you come to this level, when you actually can do free form architecture uh, from a methodology point of view, uh, you have the ability to adapt, you have the ability to actually change as you, as is needed. Uh, but to, to achieve that level, uh, not only do you need to understand the methods, you also need to have applied them, not once, but numerous times. You need to have failed, you need, need to have come into trouble with, with the methodology and understood the, the consequences of, of doing changes in To be truly agile in architecture, you need to be very skilled. And is this something that people are aware of? No, I don't think so. And also when talking about agile and architecture combination, it can be so many different interpretations of what that means. Does it mean providing an architecture that, that is provisioning an agile uh, ways of working? Is it the, the architectural work itself, you mean, is, uh, or what is it? But I think you're absolutely right. To, to, to do it, you need to be extremely skilled in this area. And of course, looking into the market, uh, not so many people have that kind of capabilities. So the understanding uh, is not there, really. So what are the skills you need for the future, as you see it? I think that you need to come into a mode where you understand that the uh, the hypothesis that we are, as architects have been uh, basing our work on the last 20 years has been that in some sense you can grab the set of requirements you're working with, you can do a full analysis on that, you can do a full design. Uh, this 100%, 100%, 100% is some kind of, of uh, precondition that we assume is, is there. Uh, obviously that's not true. Uh, you will never come to the point where you have full requirements and frankly looking forward I think we will come to the point where the amount of requirements will shrink and especially the durability of the requirements, how long into the future they are stable, that will become shorter and shorter and shorter. So we are actually approaching the neural requirement space also in architecture. How would you as an architect design a future-proof uh, architecture without frankly having any requirements? Uh, that is perhaps the major or the most significant change that is ongoing right now and will become truly... Uh, and that is a change that is going on right now and it will become truly ubiquitous in, in the market uh, within not too, too far away. What is the goal for architects in the future, do you think? It's not the five-year plan. No, absolutely not. The, the five-year plan uh, is dead, uh, has been for long, I think. Uh, it is a continuous delivery, a continuous improvement, a continuous architecture and being able to continuously change, continuously adopt uh, as an organization, as a set of systems and as an architect, uh, being able to change whatsoever. And as an architect we're talking about not functional change but structural changes and this is the hard part. So how would you allow for a fundamental change that can happen in whatever place in, in the architecture at whatever time without breaking the whole? That's, so the, the, that's the Gordian knot, I think. Uh, if you look at the, in the organization, uh, architecture has long been an IT thing. Where does it belong in the future, do you think? We are already seeing in, in the market that many organizations are actually bringing uh, IT and business development together. There is no IT department develop, doing the development and the business department doing their development. But the fact that there is a joint uh, development happening, that is already true in a couple of major organizations. Also in smaller startups, too, we see that kind of behavior. I think that will become uh, even more uh, common in, in the market. 
So of course, uh, it, it is a development tool and a way of describing and, and uh, planning for the future for the company as a whole. Whether that goes into the IT department or a business department or a joint department could vary. But I think eventually we will end up in a situation where we have a joint uh, development department in, in, in all organizations and not perhaps only having one centralized uh, development department but rather a distributed where development and change is a natural part of any part of the business. You need to be able to take change as a core but also at the leads. What do you think about creativity as an architect in the future? Is this more of a requirement than today? <laughs> well, creativity of course is a fundamental uh, aspect of being a good architect and uh, not in the sense that you should be innovative and being this, this guy who invents stuff but rather being having a big imagination and understanding the consequences if I do something what are the consequences of that if I put something back what is the consequences here you really need to be creative and understand the consequences of what you're doing uh, and of course going to the point where we say that there will be no requirement there will be no firm set of stable requirements of course, imagination and creativity would be uh, fundamental, even more than today. Do you think we will reach our goals as architects? <laughs> well, yes, uh, of course. I don't know what the goals uh, really would be, but uh, as a community, I think we have proven uh, to be quite adaptive and quite innovative, and uh, I don't see any stagnation in that part, so yes, I'm quite confident. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about a cup of coffee? A cup of coffee would be really good. Some directions, please. Absolutely, so go straight forward. When you're talking about architecture, there are a lot of constraints, but it's also the same when driving. You can't make turns everywhere you want. No, you're not, you're not supposed to do that, and the same with, with, within a system architecture. So, I mean, uh, the, of course, a platform that you provide as an architect is very much about capabilities, but it's also very much about the in invitation that you provide blocks and you provide uh, different constraints and they are not there uh, for fun they are there for a very good reason so an architect is a little bit about a guide where uh, the organization should go it is truly is i mean as an architect defining the architecture by itself uh, that is uh, a hard work you could say uh, but frankly it might be the simple part, uh, getting it communicated in the organization and, and especially getting it understood. Uh, that is perhaps the really hard part uh, as an architect to communicate it and to get acceptance for it. Uh, I've seen so many uh, examples of uh, very good architectural designs that get misunderstood and disregarded quite soon when they are distributed into the organization. So having uh, skills for uh, communicating and especially planting it and, and getting it accepted and also in that, in that scenario getting feedback of course because as an architect you can't be stable again so when you deploy it you get feedback you get understanding that actually potentially could change and you should do that uh, thank you very much should we go in and have a cup of coffee and talk about bimodal IT we can do that yeah. thank you thank you very much for viewing this episode of architecture corner and see you again <laughs>